into this story from Morning Joe because uh, I pretty much had it with the smears and Morning Joe allowing certain people to come onto the show and say the things that they're saying about Palestinian people, about the protesters, and not offering the alternative voice. They're not letting other people come onto that show and speak their piece. So it really pisses me off, but I want you to pay attention to what they're trying to do now, because now they're trying to make it so that if you are wearing certain... <sighs> certain clothing items. If you are, it's not just about you saying certain phrases anymore. If you are wearing certain clothing items that is technically pro Palestine. Now they are trying to say that that is anti-Semitic. I kid you not folks. You cannot make this up. Let's get into this piece here. We're talking about far right anti-Semitism. Sad fact is we have it on the far right. We have it on the far left. And we have it, and I hear it all the time on college campuses. It has gotten so extreme on, on many college campuses. I've heard firsthand, you can't even talk about a two-state solution without being accused of being a Zionist. You can't Because you are. <laughs> because you are. Because you still want the state of Israel to exist. Because you still want, you know, damn well that Benjamin Netanyahu or whoever would replace him, we have to be clear. We know damn well that they would not allow the Palestinian people to have their own military. So this is important. If you have a two, two states, that means that the Palestinians get the right to have a military. This is part of the reason why Netanyahu doesn't want the two state solution. And then also the two state solution that they are offering, meaning those in the media, does not give Palestinian people the right to return. And that is crucial. That is very important. Talk about peace between the Palestinians and the Jews without being called a Zionist. Jonathan Chait wrote this uh, for New York Magazine. This week, the president of the main pro-Palestinian student group at the University of Michigan shared and then deleted a social media message saying this. Until my last breath, I will utter death to every single individual who supports the Zionist state. Death and more. Death and worse. University sent an email denouncing the message. While she may be an undergrad, this student's hardly anonymous. She was one of four undergraduates to receive the University of Michigan's Dr. Martin Luther King Spirit Award, honoring students, quote, who best exemplify the leadership and extraordinary vision of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. I, it's just, it's absolutely bizarre. There's, there's nobody that is, is, is less in line with the message of Dr. Martin Luther King than somebody that would talk about death and more, death and worse. Last month, the New York Times. Uh, Pause. Um, they are actually not representing MLK in the proper way because a lot of people will refer to MLK and say that MLK was a Zionist. That's actually not true. They'll leave out the part where MLK said that he was actually gravely concerned where MLK was supposed to actually go visit uh, Israel. And then there was the war that broke out during that time. There was conflict that broke out in the Middle East during that time. And that actually didn't happen. So he didn't get to make that speech. But after that, he actually said that he was gravely concerned about Israel's pursuit to take over more of the land and to displace the Palestinian people. And he said that that would be problematic because it would cause people and cause the Palestinian people and people in the world to have a resentment towards Israel. And look what you see is happening now. So you see, they want to leave that part out. This is why I mainstream media drives me crazy because they'll tell you the whitewash version of MLK, but they won't tell you the other things, the more radical things that MLK said. They won't tell you that MLK was a socialist. They won't tell you those things. Jointly profiled her in a pro-Israel activist in a story, presenting both as searching for common humanity. As dusk neared, they walked alone to a nearby campus building and sat together on a bench. Maybe this would be the chance to recognize one another's humanity, the Times reported. He needed to know why anti-Israel protesters had not forcefully condemned the deaths of Israeli civilians. And as Jonathan Shade said, I think that mystery has been cleared up. And Donnie, 
You cannot on college campuses, on elite college campuses, it is hard to even bring up what happened on October 7th without being called a Zionist. It is hard for a student to not get canceled if they bring up the horrors of what happened on October 7th. That is misleading. Students are not being, I'm sorry, students that are bringing up <clears throat> the pro-Israel version of October 7th are not being canceled. They're not being canceled by the administration. The students that have been threatened to be canceled are the ones who took the pro-Palestinian side, such as the students that wrote that letter at Harvard University. Those were the ones that people were trying to cancel. So this is just, it's so misleading, it's ridiculous. It, it's it is there. There is in, in so many of these groups on college campuses and I've seen it firsthand. I've heard about it firsthand. There's there's not just a, a, a plea. Uh, and I think a, a plea that we would all agree with to save civilian lives in Gaza. There is an underlying hatred for Israel that's been there for years. I talked about Turning Point. You can also see other documentaries on World War II right now on Netflix that show how Jews have always been treated, the, the hatred for Jews. You see the hatred of Jews. Jonathan and I have been talking about this for years. It's been also, again, misleading. People are not having the hatred towards Jewish people. People are upset and angry towards the Israeli government. But you notice the way that he is framing it, right? He has to frame it that way in order to use the excuse that this is anti-Semitic. So that's why he's framing it that way. Joe Scarborough knows better. These people know better. They know exactly what they're doing. You're going to see in just a second, they actually interviewed Jonathan Greenblatt from the ADL. So they brought on this guy from the Anti-Defamation League, which by the way, I revealed to you a couple of weeks ago that he is actually the one that was behind the TikTok ban. It was Zionists that were pushing the TikTok ban because too much information was getting out about the history of Israel, the creation of Israel, and what the IDF was actually doing to the Palestinian people. So the, the Zionist organizations like the ADL and APAC, and there's other ones as well, they have captured way too much control, not just in this country, in the world. When we talked about the UK as well, the UK doesn't have APAC, but they have their own version of APAC. It's like that in other countries that are part of the West. Rising from the right. It's been rising on college campuses from the left. I was talking about this in Scarborough country in 2003. Just such extremism against Jews on the right, far right, and on the far left. You know, it's so beyond college campuses. Jonathan's group put out a survey that one in four Americans say they know someone that dislikes or hates Jews, and one in four Americans are know somebody who is pro Hamas. Pro Hamas. Pause. So this is Jonathan's survey. Jonathan is the guy here on the right, right? So he is the one that is in charge of the Anti Defamation League, which is also a Zionist. Uh, organization. So what you need to understand and know is that this survey that he's talking about, I'm pretty sure I'm willing to bet you the survey did not ask people if they dislike Jewish people. I'm pretty sure that survey probably asked them what their opinion was of Israel. And what they are doing is they're taking that and they're saying, well, this means Jewish people. So for example, it's like if someone gave you a survey and they said, what do you think about people what do you think about people in North? No, what do you think about North Carolina, right? And let's say you have a negative opinion of the state of North Carolina. Does that mean that you hate all the people that live in North Carolina? Does that mean you hate any of the people that live in North Carolina? No, it doesn't. It's just like if you were to give someone a survey that's overseas and you ask them, what is your opinion of the United States of America? And they have a negative opinion of it. That doesn't mean that they hate Americans. You can dislike the government and not hate the people. So just pay close attention to that. It's coming from the ADL. Jesus, I, I just can't. I can't. This is bad. In four Americans are know somebody who is pro Hamas, pro Hamas. That means you are pro annihilating Israel. You are pro 
killing Jews. And as Jonathan also pointed out, we're getting squeezed on two levels. We're getting squeezed from the right. We're getting squeezed from the left. To that same point that he said there, that if you're pro Hamas, that means that you are uh, pro, you know, the killing of Jewish people. So you can flip that and say the same thing about Israel, because you can say that if you're pro Israel, that you're pro the killing of Palestinian people. So you see how this can go both ways. The rhetoric to me, it's very problematic and being like pro Hamas, which you don't even have to be pro Hamas, basically asking for some type of self-determination for the Palestinian people, asking that these people not be occupied and oppressed anymore. They are calling that pro Hamas. That's how far this has gone. This man right here on the right is a certified liar. He's a certified propagandist, and they've been doing this for a long time. And there's also another kind of anti-Semitism where you get squeezed, where on the one hand, people are anti-Semitic against Jews and, and the tropes of vermin and they're not humans. But on the other hand, oh, they have too much. The Jews have too much. So they're getting squeezed from the left and the right and the top and the bottom. And those numbers are staggering and they're frightening. And it just sends chills through me. Yeah, I mean, look, Donnie, I think Joe put a finger on something incredibly important. So Caddy asked before, well, the threat of far right extremists. Here's the thing. When a student who's honored at the University of Michigan is praising and pleading for the death of Jews. Nobody did that. No one did that. Do you see the lies? You see the exaggeration? No one has done this. No one has gotten up there and said, oh, we need to get rid of these. people." no one has said that these are lies. And then they wonder MSNBC and CNN, you wonder why your ratings are in the toilet. You wonder why people don't watch you. I have to watch them guys. Sorry. So I can correct the shit for you, but you wonder why this is why people are turning away from mainstream media because these people, they just make things up and they say it as fact. No receipts, no nothing. No, nothing. And then they bring on this clown to tell all of these lies. And there's no one else on this panel on the show to give any type of pushback. And that's another thing that shows you that they're trying to push just that narrative and not the other one. They're not giving a fair side. They're not letting you hear both sides of the coin here. Why isn't she considered an extremist? So the far right, there's no far, you know, there's no white supremacist club at the University of Michigan that says these things. That, but by the way, the white supremacists say death to the Zionists. So why is it allowed that you have these students spewing this vile venom, making death threats against their peers? They have not been making any death threats. This is such a lie. I worked in higher ed for over 10 years, you guys. I'm still in touch with some of my former students before I left Boston University. This is not what is being said. These people are just lying. We should all be clear on this. Everyone on the panel, everyone watching me right now, when the white supremacists say death to the Zionists, everybody says that's wrong. Why is it okay when the radical left says death to the Zionists? We have got to all ask ourselves this. If you are concerned about white supremacy and that sort of extremism, and you should be, as Joe was just saying, you have got to be concerned because these kids on these college campuses, guess where they're going? To your boardrooms. They're going to editorial boards. They're going to the assignment desk of news networks. People who say death to the Zionists, I wish for that and worse. Pause here for a second. So what he is alluding to is that basically this is him putting out a call. He is putting out a call for corporations not to hire the students that are pro-Palestinian. He's not saying it that way. He's not saying those exact words. But that is him, his way of putting out the call, ladies and gentlemen. And look at the panel. This is what I was talking about. Look at the panel. Okay. So no one on this panel is Palestinian. No one on the panel is there to represent the Palestinian view. Not one person. 
And then they got the nerve to have the one black guy here. So what just, do you see what's happening here? So Israel has lost support. They've lost public support. The majority of Americans, the majority of people polled in the world is against what Israel is doing, regardless of political party. So now they got to bring in this guy. They're trying their best, trying their best. How can we get people to support Israel again? Okay, let's just say that basically these kids that are for the Palestinians, those people are anti-Semitic. I'm going to say it again for the 100th time on this show. Palestinians are Semites too. Semites are those who speak a Semitic language that includes Arabs, that includes Hebrew. So being pro-Palestinian is not being anti-Semitic. More people need to write that down and pass that on. And if you wouldn't tolerate it, if someone is wearing a swastika on their arm, I'm sorry, you shouldn't tolerate it if they're wearing a kaffir. Yeah, all right. Calling death to anyone. So you guys hear this? All right, CEO. So he froze, I think he froze there a little bit. I have another version of that part. Maybe Hotspot got it right. This is the part here where they're talking about clothing. Pay attention to this. You have got to be concerned because these kids on these college campuses, guess where they're going? To your boardrooms. They're going to editorial boards. They're going to the assignment desk of news networks. People who say, death to the Zionists, I wish for that and worse. And if you wouldn't tolerate it, if someone is wearing a swastika on their arm, I'm sorry, you shouldn't tolerate it if they're wearing a kaffiyah. Kaffiyah. He's saying kaffiyah. I think he got disconnected a little bit. But... The kaffiyah is the scarf that you've seen people probably wearing at the Palestinian protests. It's the white scarf with the black, you know, like lines and dots and stuff like that. So now he's trying to compare that to someone wearing a swastika. Do you guys see what's happening? What's going to happen now? First, they started telling people you couldn't say from the river to the sea. They said, no, no, we got to ban those people that do this. Now they're trying to tell you that if you're wearing a kaffiyah, that that is also anti-Semitic. What's next, ladies and gentlemen? What else are they going to tell you? What else is the ADL going to tell you that you cannot wear, you cannot say, you cannot do? What are they going to do? If they see you wearing black people, I'm going to say this too, because what happens if they say, if you're wearing a Malcolm X hat, if you're wearing a t-shirt with Malcolm X, any of the black re revolutionary leaders, what if they come back and say that that's anti-Semitic because of the views that Malcolm X had, because of the views that Nelson Mandela had, because of the views that Kwame Ture had? What if they start telling you, you can't wear clothing that has those revolutionary leaders on it? Because that is also deemed anti-Semitic. You know how far this can go? What if it gets to the point where they start banning those books? I'm just thinking far in the future. I'm thinking about how far they can really take this. If they tell you from now on, we are no longer selling Malcolm X's autobiography. Look at what is happening around us, folks. They are trying to take away your, your speech. They're trying to tell you what you can and cannot say. Now he's trying to tell you what you can and cannot wear. What else is next? What are we going to do? Next thing you know, it's going to be, if you don't pledge some type of alliance to Israel, you're going to be deemed as a traitor in this country. Think back to McCarthyism. Think back to how they, they were going around calling people just randomly, you know, communists. Let's jail these people. They're a communist. What do you think is coming? And it's hard to think about that now because of the way that we live. But they're already, they already had FBI agents go to this woman's house, this Muslim woman's house, because of pro-Palestinian posts that she put on Facebook. This is a problem. Then they're trying to take away TikTok. Let's get rid of that. There's too much, too much truth being told on there about the state of Israel. If they can't control the narrative, they will try to remove that platform. This is insane. 
I have never in my life heard someone say that a kafia is similar to a swastika. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. What's up next, guys? What's next? All of you that have moved to the United States from another country, what if they tell you you can't have your Puerto Rican flag in your car anymore? Take it down. That's not pro-Israel. In 2024, we have moved backwards. We should be moving forward. We should have more freedom of speech. We should have more freedom of expression, but we're going backwards. These are very scary times. Some of you watching, you may have lived through the McCarthy era. I didn't, I read about it. I've heard about it. I don't want to go to that. But we need to start talking about the immense amount of power that groups like the ADL and APAC have in this country where they can make these, these determinations, these decisions. Now that's him putting out another call. So he put out a call here on national television telling people that if someone is wearing a kafia, that's the same thing as someone wearing a swastika. And none of these things that they are saying or that they are doing is making things easier for Jewish people. I can tell you that much. You're not helping Jewish people. You're making things worse for them. You're making things harder for them. And I know many Jewish people that will tell you that this clown right here, Jonathan Greenblatt does not represent them. Such a mess. Such a mess. Miko Paled actually responded to this. Miko's been on the show as well. He said, Green Blot and the ADL are lying, despicable, hate mongering, terror supporting, genocide sympathizers. The ADL must be shut down. And don't forget, wear your kafia with pride. Like the flag of Palestine, it is a symbol of hope and freedom. Well said, Miko. Well said. These are crazy times, folks.